some more. Amen. Thank you, choir. Thank you, choir. Thank you, choir. Thank you, choir. This is just a rehearsal. Thank you, choir. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. When I think of the goodness of Jesus, hey, hey, where were you at last week? What hell? I was praying. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord.
Philippians 3, thir uh, 13 and 14. And PTSD is just what it says, post-traumatic stress disorder. And the National Institute of Mental Health defines it as this. When in danger, it is natural to feel afraid. This fear triggers many split-second changes in the body to prepare to defend against the danger or to avoid it. This fight or flight response is a healthy reaction meant to protect a person from harm. But in post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD, this reaction is changed or damaged. People who have PTSD may feel stressed or frightened even when even when they are no longer in danger. And that's the point of this service. The Living Bible, Philippians 3 and 13 and 14 reads this. No, dear brothers and sisters, I have not yet achieved it. I have not yet arrived. I'm not where I'd like to be. But I focus on this one thing, forgetting the past, PTSD, stuck back yonder, and looking forward to what lies ahead. I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the prize the heavenly prize for which God through Jesus Christ is called PTSD. When the danger no longer exists. When the situation no longer exists. When looking back dominates your thought processes. When what happened yesterday that has that has more value than now today. You have PS T well PTS. When you are unable to reconcile an event of the past as the past. Wow. And that event dominates your current life, you have PTSD. Yeah. Now there are a few of you a little itchy in your seats because you know you look back too much. <laughs> I, I, I'm, not, I'm not saying nothing that I don't know because sometimes I look at that. Like Paul, I have not yet arrived. I'm not preaching something that is not applicable to me. I have not yet arrived. When every time you see Mary James or Tyrone, all you can think about is how they did you wrong 10 years ago. <laughs> you have PTSD. <laughs> If in your current relationship everything is well as far as relationships go, but your focus is on that situation which happened Come on, y'all. When you can't think of, you know, when every time something happens, you, you know, I remember when... You have PTSD. <laughs> now many here will deny, recruit, and outright close their minds to any, to any thought of giving up the memory of hurt and pain of past events on the premise that to do so would make them vulnerable to repeat the past. Yes, you will. You say, if I don't remember that, I'll allow that happen to happen to me again. No, no, no. <coughs> Let me put on a different hat. I'll be to be a therapist in just one moment. No. Upon close examination, if you're honest, if you're honest, both of us, no. No. both of you, were complicit in whatever took place. 
just like it takes two hands to clap. <laughs> well, it took two people to create the disagreement. The seed of dysfunction was planted and cared for by both of us, you and me, until we, you and me, own our part in this dysfunction. We, you and I, remain stuck and unable to change the situation. Not to look back doesn't mean we don't exercise discernment and good judgment using all available information, including the past and making current choices. Not to do so would make us a victim doomed to repeat the past. Good decision making is our rudder. Not our past. It's not a good idea to grab onto an anchor on a sinking ship. You need to take care of the rudder to guide you. For if you grab onto the anchor in your Christian life, you will find yourself in the abyss of the past when you were what you don't want to be. Now that I've cleared that up, <laughs> I say like Paul, when I said you and me, it ain't easy not to look back to the past. Well, I've not yet arrived. In verse 13, Paul said, I have not achieved it yet. Like Paul, like you, like me, we're not the only ones who have allowed looking to the past to some plot to sometimes influence our now. Yeah. Right now, the scripture is full of examples of people of God being under the control of yesterday. Let's look at Lot's wife. Lot's wife. Her look back for all that is said of her, for that is all that is said of her and her recorded doom, her heart was still in sight. Yes. And looking back, just said, she said, must I have did it very well? Are you caught up so much in yesterday that you can't let go of the place of doom and gloom? When you were less than who you want to be. When you were less than who you are right now. Why are you looking back? <laughs> looking back is sure to end up going back. Well, if you roll on a boat upstream against the current, the current's coming hard at you. you roll. The minute you stop rolling, what's going to happen? <laughs> Our Christian life is just like that. Once you take your focus off Jesus, once you think you can do it all by yourself and let go of the Bible and the Word of God, you will find yourself going back. <laughs> you'll end up exactly where you came from. What is your investment in the past? Often, often it is in playing the victim as if you had no role or part. Can't have him by itself. Well, you were there. You did something. <laughs> Lot's wife, like many of us, clearly suffers from PTSD. Yeah. The scripture says she turned into a pillar of salt, yeah. forever looking back, reliving her time in Sodom, <laughs> reliving her time in a place where she said she didn't want to be. <coughs> but she was stuck in her mind. How bitter are you? 
How has yesterday contaminated your outlook for today? Yes. <clears throat> Are you stuck in silence? God's command to you and me is not to look back. I heard old Satchel Page said, don't look back. They might be gaining on you. <laughs> Your past will creep up and gain on you if you dwell back in. If you are here this morning, stuck in unforgiving, stuck in reliving a terrible experience over and over again, yes. stuck in believing you can't change how you see the world, well. how you see yourself and others, stuck in the belief you are unable to create a new outlook for yourself, I got some good news for you. Yes, sir. 2,000 years ago, oh, yeah. God recognized we are having a little trouble with just that situation. So he sent his only son, who took the sin of the world upon himself. What does this mean? It means Jesus took the weight of the past, of your past, my past, everybody here's past, upon himself. So that we might have abundant life. A life in which we can look forward to meeting Christ one day in the by and by. Yeah. Oh yeah. A life in which we're like a runner going to the finish line. But not just one runner wins. All of us can be winning yeah. there. Yeah. Christians, when they run after Christ, are winners. This requires us as Christians to cultivate a garden of exoneration by planting seeds of forgiveness. When the seed of forgiveness has been planted, it yields the fruit of looking forward. But you can't look back. Even Christ said, anyone who puts his hand to the plow and then looks back is not fit for the kingdom of heaven. But you know something? You can't go forward and backward at the same time. You can't plow a garden of forgiveness and you looking back. I remember old farmer had a blind mule. And I asked him, how does a mule plant a straight fur? He says, son, the mule doesn't plow the furrow, you do. You guide the mule. That's right. Yeah. So Christ was saying that you must plant the garden looking forward to the outcome. You can only plant a garden where you can drop seeds in it if you're looking forward, yeah. not backwards. That's a devastating statement, Christ. Our Christ, who Jesus is the light of the world, the bright morning star, my redeemer, how can you say this to me? How can you do this to me? How can you look, be in two places at the same time? The question is, how can we be a new creature in Christ and still be dominated by yesterday? Thoughts and actions of yesterday dominate your life. You might as well not go down into the pool. You're still the same person. I'm sorry. I'm sorry if you can't look forward. If you're not a new creature in Christ, who are you? <laughs> we can't if we are looking backwards. As new creatures in Christ, we take on a new mindset. A mind which is not afraid. A mind does, that does not remember any unhappy experience. <clears throat> nor does it anticipate any. Through Christ, we have perfect faith and confidence in the outcome. For we are one with God. Yeah. 
When you are one with God, when you have decided to accept Christ as your Redeemer, your Savior, when you have decided to make the walk with Him, you are one with Him. Amen. Yes. Am I there? Not ever looking back? Not yet. Not, not yet. But like Paul, I keep on pressing on to the high calling in Jesus Christ. Amen. Sometimes I feel like the Israelites camped at the Red Sea, <laughs> being free from God, being free by God from Pharaoh. Yeah. I look up and I see Pharaoh and his army behind me. I see the Red Sea come on yeah. front of me. Yeah. Lord, what am I going to do? Come on, preacher. But I got more good news. More good news. Yeah. I, Mama told me that God didn't bring me this far. Yeah. And now 